I suppose it all started with the snow. You see, it was a very special kind of snow. A snow that made you happy, happy, and a giddy, even giddy. A snow to make a home come and homier, and natural enemies friends. Natural. For it was the first snow of the season. And as any child can tell you, there's a certain magic to the very first snow. Especially when it falls on the day before Christmas. For when the first snow is also a Christmas snow, <laughs> well, something wonderful is bound to happen. Children, back to your seats. The snow can wait. Now, now. I've hired Professor Hinkle, the magician, to entertain at today's class Christmas party. So, pay attention. Now, Professor Hinkle was just about the worst magician in the world. <laughs> eggs into my hat. Abacadabra, to coin the phrase. <laughs> and voila, the eggs have turned into... Messy, messy, messy. Mm. Where is that rabbit? Hocus pocus, where are you? The only thing this hat's good for is the trash can. You, you naughty, naughty little girl. And you stay in there, or there'll be no carrots for Christmas. But you can't take that hat back. It brought Frosty to life. You saw it happen. I saw nothing of the kind. Quiet. I can't lose that hat if it's really got magic now. It'll make me a millionaire magician. But we saw Frosty come to life, didn't we? Uh-huh. Oh, we sure did. You silly children believe everything you see. When you're grown up, you'll realize that snowman can't come to life. But we... Silly, silly, silly. Oh, Frosty, we don't care what grown-ups say. We know you did come to life. We know, Frosty. 
We just know. Frosty the snowman was a jolly happy soul. With a corn cup pipe and a button nose and two eyes made out of coal. Frosty the snowman. to Frosty and the children. That point must be made very clear. Therefore, Hocus Pocus was entirely in the right in what he was about to do. Well, Hocus Pocus raced back to the children just as fast as he could. said my first words. But, but snowmen can't talk. <laughs> All right, come on now. What's the joke? Could, could I really be alive? I mean, I can make words. I can move. I can juggle. I can sweep. I can count to ten. One, two, three, four, five, nine, six, eight. Uh, well, I can count to five. <laughs> what do you know? I'm even ticklish. In fact, I'm all living. I am alive. What a neat thing to happen to a nice guy like me. That must have been some magic in that old silk hat they found. Oh, when they placed it on his head, he began to dance around. Frosty the snowman was as loud as he could be. And the children say he could laugh and play just the same as you and me. Uh-oh. What's the matter, Frosty? Who? Is there a thermometer around here? Over there in the wall. Why? Oh, I was afraid of that. The thermometer's getting red. I hate red thermometers. Why, Frosty? Because when the thermometer gets all reddish, the temperature goes up. And when the temperature goes up, I start to melt. And when I start to melt, I get all wishy-washy. Then you've got to go someplace where you'll never melt. The only place I'd never melt is the North Pole. Then we've got to get you there. Yeah, we'll take you downtown to the railroad station and put you on a train. Great. I always wanted to see the town. Let's make a party out of it. Let's have a parade. Didn't you see that traffic light? 
What's a traffic light? Up there on the lamppost. What's a lamppost? Oh, you want a ticket, wise guy? I'd love one. To the North Pole, please. Huh? You've got to excuse him, sir. You see, he just came to life, and he doesn't know much about such things. Oh, well, okay, if he just came to life. Move along! That silly snowman. Once they come to life, they don't know nothing. Come to life? Ticket to the North Pole, please. Hmm. Well, it it North Pole? Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> By the way, uh, Saskatchewan, Hudson Bay, No Alaska, the Klondike, and Aurora Borealis. Gotta make a change at Nanook of the North Bay. <laughs> That'll be three thousand dollars and four cents, including tax. Oh, but we don't have any money. No money. <laughs> no money. No ticket. Oh, I'll never get to the North Pole. Oh, Frosty, you just can't melt. Oh, Karen, don't you get all slushy, too. <laughs> what is it, Hocus? Out the window? A refrigerated boxcar. On a train headed north. You'll be safe there, Frosty. Come on. <laughs> Full of ice cream and frozen Christmas cakes. What a neat way to travel. Hurry up, Frosty. The train is pulling out. Are you coming to the North Pole, too? I'm sure my mother won't mind. As long as I'm home in time for supper. Actually, a refrigerated boxcar is a splendid way to travel. Splendid, that is, if one is a snowman or a furry-coated rabbit. But for Karen... Are you cold, Karen? Now, that's a silly question. You wouldn't be sneezing if you weren't cold. Well, just... just a, li a little... Frosty realized that Karen had to get out of that car as soon as possible. So when the little freight train stopped to let an express full of happy Christmas travelers pass, Frosty took advantage of the opportunity and quickly got them all out. Oh, you tricked me! No fair! The only thing Professor Hinkle could do was make a jump for us. Frosty wanted to get as far away as he could before Hinkle woke up. But 
the woods through which they traveled were still bitterly cold. Focus, I've got to get Karen all warmed up, or she's a goner. Well, I can't make a fire. Oh boy, that's one thing I really can't do. Guess we just better keep moving till we find someone who can. Then suddenly they came upon a tiny glen, which seemed almost magical. For it was Christmas Eve, and the woodland animals were all decorating for that big celebration. They knew Santa was to come that night, and they wanted everything to be just right. Focus, speak to the animals. See if they won't all pitch in and build a fire for Karen. The animals were delighted at them. So they found the spot away from the glen where the fire wouldn't catch on to the tree. Soon there was a spark, and in almost no time, a splendid fire was crackling away. Frosty was careful to stay far away from the flames. Hocus, we've got to find someone to help Karen get home before she freezes and me to the North Pole before I melt. But who? No, not the Marines. No, not the President of the United States. Oh, they were both swell ideas, but we've got to find someone nearby. Yeah, Santa Claus. That's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that before? Hocus, you go back with the animals. And when Santa comes, you bring him right here. Understand? Hurry now! And so Frosty kept a silent vigil, waiting patiently all through the night until Santa would arrive. But suddenly... Oh, a campfire. Well, isn't that all snug and comfy? <laughs> no, don't! Now, give me that hat or else. Or else what? Oh, well, don't bother me with details. Give me that hat. <laughs> Get on my shoulders, Karen. You see, Frosty, since he was made of snow and sun, was the fastest belly whopper in the world. <laughs> and old Professor Hinkle was soon far out distant. And now it was Frosty's good fortune that right at the bottom of the hill, was a tiny greenhouse used to grow precious tropical poinsettias for Christmas. It's got to be all warm and snug inside for those Christmas flowers to grow so beautiful. Let's go in. Oh, but... but you will melt. Just a little. I'll only stay inside for a minute. Besides, I've been meaning to take off a little weight anyway. Stay in here much longer, and I'll really make a splash in the world. <laughs> now I've got you, and the minute you're all melted, the hat will be mine. <laughs> Santa had arrived, but was he too late? Focus explained the situation to Santa, who, as you know, speaks a fluent rabbit. And 
when they didn't find Frosty and Karen on the hill, Santa followed Frosty's pad in the snow to the greenhouse. But when they got inside, a terrible sight met their eyes. Frosty's not gone for good. You see, he was made out of Christmas snow, and Christmas snow can never disappear completely. <laughs> oh, it sometimes goes away for almost a year at a time and takes the form of spring and summer rain. But you can bet your boots that when a good, jolly December wind kisses it, <laughs> it'll turn into Christmas snow all over again. Yes, but he was my friend. <laughs> Just watch. Wait a minute. I want that hat, and I want it now. Don't you dare touch that. And just what are you going to do about it? If you so much as lay a finger on the brim, I'll never bring you another Christmas present as long as you live. Never? Never. No more trick cards or magic balls or... No more anything. Oh, that's not fair. I mean... We evil magicians have to make a living, too. Now you go home and write, I am very sorry for what I did to Frosty a hundred zillion times. And then maybe, just maybe, mind you, you'll find something in your stocking tomorrow morning. A, a new hat, maybe? Oh, yes, sir. Goodbye, everyone. Sorry to lose and run, but I've got to get busy writing. Busy, busy, busy. <laughs> Come on, Frosty. We're all waiting for you. Happy birthday! Frosty the Snowman is a fairy tale, they say. He was made of snow, but the children know how he came to life one day. And so Santa took Karen home and made ready to bring Frosty back to the North Pole. Ah! Ah! Karen hated to say goodbye to Frosty. But as Santa promised, Frosty returned every year with the magical Christmas snow. And every year there was a great celebration with a big Christmas parade. Look at that Frosty goat. Over the hills of snow. Frosty the snowman was a jolly happy soul with a corn cup pipe and a button nose and two eyes made out of coal. And with Frosty the snowman, Christmas was always very merry indeed. You have a merry Christmas. Frosty the snowman had to hurry on his way. But he waved goodbye, saying, don't you cry. I'll be back on Christmas Day. Yeah. 